In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to create pipes and wires. All right, so we have kind of like an electrical box here. And what we want to do is we want to learn how to create things like wires and pipes that we would see uh, in some environments. And this could be used in many different forms. You could use this to create vines and um, any type of cylindrical or really any shape uh, that's going to go across any length um, across a path. So to get started with this, we need two things whenever working uh, in 3ds Max. We need a path and then we need a shape. So the path is going to represent the overall length of the wire and the overall um, path that that wire is taking across the floor or up a wall. And then we need the actual shape of that wire. So usually wire is round or something like that. But we're not limited to that. We could do things like creating um, I-beams, which are uh, kind of in the shape of a capital I. You could create that shape and um, loft that across a path to give it um, a length across a building or something like that. So the first thing that we want to do is create our actual path, which is going to represent uh, the path of the wire. So to get started, let's go to our shapes under our create panel. Let's go to line. and We're going to go to our front view. I'm going to hit F3 and I'm just going to come over here to my electrical box and I'm going to uh, click one point inside right here at this box here and we're going to click a point just outside and then we're going to go straight up okay so I'm going to click a few points as we go up this path just to allow this to bend in a few different places okay and then we should be above uh, the actual uh, level here okay or the scene now with that line we can go to vertex mode and we can make some adjustments to those vertices as we see fit. So if I want to come in and start to kind of bend these around in different ways, just kind of give this a little bit more form, I could do so. And then I could also come in and select all of those vertices and switch those to something like Bezier, which will smooth them out and make them appear a little bit more like wires. So if I can grab these handles and start to shape this however I see fit. Okay, I can move those vertices individually and we can start to come in here and move these handles and get whatever shape that we would like out of this. Okay, now once we've created the path for our wire, we need to create the shape for that. Now before I move on, let's actually take our wire and let's put this into position. So let's grab our move tool and we're going to hit X to uh, turn off the constraint on that move tool and we're going to put that to where it fits right inside of this area here so go ahead and I'll pull this up and then I can go to vertex mode and I could take these individual vertices and I could actually push them up against the wall to make them fit a little more snugly if I wanted to I could pull them out in different directions okay do something kind of like so all right so now that we have that let's create our shape so I want these to be cylindrical so I'm going to create a circle in my front view so hit F3 and then F to go to your front view and right up here next to this wire somewhere it doesn't really matter where you create it I'm going to create a small circle okay now you can make it a large circle or a smaller one it doesn't really matter because I'll show you how to change that shape once we're finished okay so now let's go ahead and let's take our wire let's grab a hold of it and with it selected let's go to our geometry section of our create panel and under standard primitives this drop down box let's expand that and go to compound objects now under compound objects we're going to see a tool called loft now these tools in here will create shapes but it takes at least two shapes to create um, something with the loft so we have our path and then we have our shape here so with our path selected let's go to loft and then you'll see we have a creation method roll out here and under our creation method we have get path and get shape so whatever you have selected if you have your path selected in this case you want to go ahead and get shape and that will allow you to pick that shape now if you have it reversed to where the shape is picked 
then you want to do get path and then select your path. Now I find it much easier whenever working this way trying to create wires I find it much easier to have the path selected and then get the shape because what will happen is it will actually create the shape right along this path exactly where I've placed it. Alright so let's go ahead and get shape. Let's select our circle and you'll see that that has been created here. Alright now this wire is very very large and I want to make that a little bit smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my modify panel with this loft object selected and I'm going to expand loft and go to my shape. Now at one of the ends of this loft object we should be able to select a shape. So if you hit F3 if we come down to this end you can see that we can pick something. So if we select that, we can select the shape. And now what I can do is I can scale it any way that I want and that will make it smaller or larger. Okay, so you do have that freedom. Now let's say that we want to change the overall path of our wire. So let's turn that off. This is done a little bit differently. Uh, we have to go into our line. So if I deselect my loft, and I come in here there should be a line right in the center of that so if you double click on that you can see line 002 is there Then I can go to vertex mode and this allows me to come in and select the individual vertices and move those and shape those whoever, however I see fit now this is tied to that lofted object now if we were to ever make a copy of this lofted object we're going to lose that relationship with that line so be careful of that so if I come in and I know that that is the path that I want this wire to take I want to go ahead and create a new one. So what I can do is I can come in hold down shift and drag out that loft and let's actually grab our loft here. Let's hold shift and drag that out to make a clone or a copy. Let's make this a copy and hit OK. Now what I can do is I can grab that line and its vertices and I can come in and reshape that. Okay, now you'll notice that it's staying tied to that very first one. So I've created a copy of that initial loft, but it is not tied to that path. So we can only change the original. So I'll come in here and I'll make some changes to the path here and just kind of adjust how that is put into place. Okay, and just kind of trying to set up a little bit of randomness with these wires. All right, so that's looking good. Let's go ahead and make a copy of that one. Okay, so I'm going to hold down Shift and make a copy of that, put it right in between those. We'll hit OK, and then I'm going to go to my uh, vertex mode, make sure that I grab my line there. And then I'll come in and I'll make a different shape here. So make that look a little bit different. Okay. So we'll do something quite along these lines here. And wires tend to meet up pretty close at the top of wherever they are. So we don't have to worry about changing that too much. I am going to change that a little bit. And then there we go. So I can select all of those lofted objects and I can go ahead and change their color to black and apply a gray material. Now let's make sure that we have our line separated here. So sometimes we have to come in, get pretty close to where that's at. And I believe that's in here. There it is. Let's change that color to something like an orange, just so that's easier to see in wireframe. All right, now another thing that I want to show you about wires is if we take a look at our wireframe here under our edge faces, we can see that it is very, very round, and we've got a lot of polygons going across. We could actually change the parameters of the skin by changing the shape steps and the path steps. So if I want to take the shape steps down, you'll notice that I'm getting fewer and fewer polygons around the object. But if I want to make it smoother as it goes up, what I can do is increase the path steps, and that will make that line very smooth as it uh, conforms across that path. Now if I want to take that down I could do so as well but you'll notice that that becomes very very rigid and doesn't really follow along that path very well. So let's go up to 10 on that and we can do the same thing with this one. So we'll take this down to 1, take it 
take this to 10. And this is on the lofted object. Okay, We'll take that to 10. This is not along that line. All right, so now I want to show you how we could create pipes. And it's very similar. And I want to show you really quickly just how flexible using lofting is. So in our top view, let's go ahead and go to our Create panel. And let's go to Line. And I'm going to hit F3 just so I can see my wireframe. And I'm going to create a line going across from here up to here and then straight up this way. So I'm creating a path in which I want these pipes to follow. Now let's go ahead and grab our move tool and I'm going to pull that up toward the top there and that looks pretty good. And I'm going to show you a quick way to create something like a set of um, a set of pipes like maybe three different pipes of different shapes and things like that. So I can take this shape here and I can hold down shift and make a copy of it and I'm just going to make a copy and then I'm going to scale it just to make it a little bit larger and then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to make another copy of it and I'm going to place it up here. Let's scale this up make it a little bit larger. So I have these circles and I'm going to position them a little bit better to where they're fairly close but not touching and then I'm going to select one of these and I'm actually going to attach it to the rest of those. So how do we attach these circles? Well you'll notice that we don't have attach. Well with circles they're not editable splines so let's go ahead and convert those by right clicking convert to editable spline. Now if I take this circle I can go into attach and attach these objects. Now notice it has not changed the shape of our wire so you are safe from that. Alright now I want to scale this up just a little bit more make that a little bit larger okay just so I can see that. Now I'm going to grab this line I'm going to go to vertex mode and in my top view I'm going to hit F3 really quickly I'm going to go ahead and take these points and convert that to bezier corner and I'm going to curve out this corner here just to make that kind of swoop in there a little bit smoother. All right. So now I have that worked out. Let's go ahead and grab our path and let's go to our create panel, geometry, and then compound objects and then loft. Let's get shape and select our shape that we've created. Now because these are all attached as one shape you'll notice that it allows us to create kind of this grouped set of pipes and now I can come in and select these pipes and let's select the loft object there and I could raise that up put that into position and even if I want to I could come in select the shapes and I could scale those up and scale that to make that even bigger in my scene here. And I can even position those wherever I like in my scene. So if I don't feel like it's um, sitting on there properly, I could do so. All right, so that's a way that we can create wires and pipes using the loft. And in our next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to uh, creatively duplicate objects. Okay, and we're going to be using these splines to do that. I'll show you that next.